Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, uh, took a little week off after I finished that docu-series and writing all that stuff. Uh, you know, just because that docu-series was a lot of work and uh, took a while for me to get it all done. But, uh, you know, now I'm back. It's football season again. I'm gonna be back to doing more videos. Um, I just wanna say thank you guys for watching that series and sharing the series. I still, the views are still going up. You guys seem to really enjoy it. Uh, get, we got a little better as it went on, so thank you guys for doing that. I enjoy doing those big summer projects, so now we're back to normal content. So, today we're gonna do a little experiment with the with an NFL video. Uh, we've seen a lot of change over the last 10 years in the NFL. Definitely over the last, uh, definitely over the last decade. We've seen uh, teams change the power dynamic. We've seen teams rise and then fall within a flash. We've seen bottom feeders rise to become the new kings of their prospective conferences and divisions. We've seen uh, big superstar players change destinations when we didn't think that was gonna happen. We've seen teams change whole cities, new stadiums have risen. The NFL has certainly shifted, especially if you look at the way that they, like, you know, we used to have the big, tall pocket passer quarterbacks. You know, we had the Brady's and Breeze and Eli Manning's and Peyton Manning. We had, uh, you know, Tom Brady, who's still in the league, Ben Roethlisberger. We had these big, tall pocket passers. Now, it's a gunslinger league with guys who know how to use their legs. We got Patrick Mahomes, we got Lamar Jackson, you got Joe Burrow, you got Justin Herbert, you've got uh, Dak Prescott. You've got now a, a whole new shift in dynamics, a whole new power shift in the league. So that of course makes us all wonder as football fans, what lies next for the league? What could the next 10 years bring in change to the National Football League? And I've got a, a few ideas. One of them, I think, uh, I don't know if this is actually going to happen, but I wanted to explore a little bit. I wanted to check to see if this could be at all viable. Could the NFL do something like an Eastern and a Western Conference format? Similar to what we see in the NHL and uh, in the NBA. Now, I know that the NFL doesn't want to be like those leagues, I get all that. But this is just an experiment to see, could they survive it? Uh, how would it affect playoff format? How would it affect seeding? What about the schedules, the alignment of the league itself? You know, where does it start and end between each conference? Let's get into that here today. I have something thought out, and you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments if you think this is a terrible idea, if you think it's an okay idea, and what changes you would make to it. Anyways, let's get this going. Okay, so here's what we're gonna go over today. We're gonna go over how the format would change in terms of a conference standing, how the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference would look. We're gonna go over divisions, you know, how would a division look, and you know, how many teams per division, what's the line between each one. We're gonna go over how the playoff format would change because this would lead to definitely a change in the playoff format. We're gonna look at seeding, and we're gonna look at what the benefits are of this kind of idea versus, you know, the cons, the pros and the cons, and is it better than what the NFL currently does. Let's start with the Western Conference. I believe that we can kind of draw the line near, uh, near where Detroit is, near Michigan. And, the, and with maybe not a straight line exactly, it we could definitely fudge it a little bit. And when you see what teams I have in which conference, we can definitely see which teams would adjust and which teams we would put where a little bit later. But that's just because, you know, I look at how in the NHL did it in the 90s. From the 90s through the, through the 2000s, the Detroit Red Wings played in the Western Conference, and that gave us some fantastic series, some fantastic playoff rounds. We had the iconic rivalry with the Avalanche in the 90s, but eventually Detroit couldn't handle all the travel times. It was exhausting for them, you know, going to play all the California teams and playing Vancouver and Edmonton, who are more on the, on the West Coast. It got too much for them, so eventually they just moved to the Eastern Conference because traveling to New York and Florida that's not as much as a hassle as them going all the way to California and the West Coast. So, now, here's how I would do it if we were to do sort of the uh, a, a similar idea to the Western Conference. I would do two divisions for the NFL, a Midwest division and a Coastal division. The Coastal division would, take, would sound just like that, take care of mostly the West Coast teams. And I have them here written down so I didn't forget them. In the Coastal division, these are more teams on the Pacific, what, the Pacific Coast, going and going up and down. We would have the Seattle Seahawks, the Los Angeles Rams, the Los Angeles Chargers, the Arizona Cardinals, the San Francisco 49ers, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Denver Broncos. That's your coastal division. 
seems somewhat competitive, obviously with the Broncos now getting Russell Wilson, the Raiders seem to have finally found some new form again, the Niners, maybe Trey Lance if he pans out, obviously the Cardinals are still a really fun team, the Chargers with Herbert, the Rams still have a, have a powerhouse in the making, very competitive division, it would be tough to win in there. The Midwest division would be just, it'd be a little top heavy. We would have the Green Bay Packers, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Chicago Bears, Dallas Cowboys, Minnesota Vikings, Cincinnati Bengals, Houston Texans. Now you might notice I only have seven teams per division. I'll get to that in a bit. Now, yes, I know that if we're drawing the line at Michigan, why do I have an Ohio team in there? I just for the sake of a semi-balance between the two, I had to put one of the Ohio teams in the Western Conference. And I chose Cincinnati because it's, you know, furthest west of the two. So I chose Cincinnati. So uh, we're throwing them in there. And I think that's, again, it's a little top-heavy. Obviously, Green Bay has Aaron Rodgers. The Chiefs have uh, Patrick Mahomes. The Cowboys still have a lot of talent. The Bengals are stacked, especially offensively. The Bears, Vikings, and, and Texans kind of get lost in the shuffle a little bit there. So we're going to find, and of course I'll get to all that in the playoff stage. So that'd be our Western Conference. I think it'd be a really fun conference. It'd be extremely competitive. Little top heavy for sure, but I still think it would be a lot of fun. If you guys want to make any adjustments to that, please let me know. I'm always open to see you know, what you guys would do if we were doing this. Uh, Eastern Conference ideas. I think we would do a Central Division and an Atlantic Division. A little derivative of the NHL. Couldn't think of anything. Better names. Central Division, we would have the Detroit Lions, the Buffalo Bills, the Indianapolis Colts, the Cleveland Browns, the New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons, Tennessee Titans, Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I had to choose one of the New York teams to throw in to, uh, to throw into us into the sort of the Central Division. I chose Buffalo because it's furthest, you know, toward the cent uh, toward uh, I guess I could I guess you could call it the Central part of the U.S. Uh, compared to the other New York teams, so I would throw Buffalo in there. Uh, chose most of the Southern teams. I think that's pretty simple. Why? Because we have a lot of teams up and down the coast. So I throw the Central teams in there. I threw Tennessee in there I, I, for something like I didn't agree with the NHL putting Tennessee in the Western Conference or like how the NBA puts Memphis in the Western Conference. I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Throw them in the East. That's where they belong. They belong in the East. So and that's what I would do. In the Atlantic, we have the Jets and the Giants, both New York teams, Baltimore Ravens, Washington Commanders, New England Patriots, Miami Dolphins, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Carolina Panthers. Pretty simple, pretty cut and dry, all those teams up and down the, east, the eastern seaboard. And that's pretty simple for an Atlantic division. Now, again, I do have to address this. So, we would have nine teams in per division in the east, as opposed to seven per in the west. So that brings to conclusion, if we wanted to do 16 teams per conference, how would we do things? What teams would we kind of, you know, maybe fudge the line a little bit to put them in the Western Conference as opposed to the East? Do we just put Tennessee in the Western Conference like everybody else, even though they're definitely more East than West? Is that what we end up doing? I don't agree with that personally, but maybe we kind of let one of the Southern, uh, uh, one of the South teams and then maybe the Browns, maybe let them sneak over to the Western Conference. Uh, when I broke down my playoff format, my playoff seeding, and I kind of showed how I would do this, there wasn't too much changing of the playoff format based on how many teams were per conference. So that would be a little bit different. I don't know if you guys agree with that. So yeah, I didn't find much difference in terms of when I did my playoff format, you know, 14 teams in the West as opposed to you know, you have 18 in the East. I didn't think there was that much of a difference because the seeding doesn't really affect by that much. You guys can let me know if you have any ideas how you would kind of balance that out if we must have even conferences, but we're off with that. I think those divisions would be very competitive. When you see what teams have what in terms of talent, some divisions seem a little bit weaker than others. Uh, some seem a little top heavy. Uh, the Atlantic division in particular, oh boy. Like y'all Baltimore and New England, They're, they would be the two uh, top heavy teams. Tampa Bay, as long as Tom Brady's there. If the Panthers can get going with Baker Mayfield, maybe Carolina throws their hat in the ring. Jets and the Giants, I mean, they're both rebuilding teams. Who knows if they can get going, that would be help this division big time. Washington's kind of a black hole for now. Uh, Jacksonville's, of course, just still struggling. Miami, if Tua pans out, 
there's a lot of ifs in that particular division. There's three or four teams you could definitely say, okay, yeah, those teams would be playoff teams. Uh, Central division, pretty competitive. You have the Colts in there. They're always in the mix. Cleveland is still talented, minus their quarterback situation. Um, uh, New Orleans never seems to go away. They stick around. Uh, Tennessee is still a very tough team to beat. Pittsburgh, if Pickett, oh boy, with Wade Pickett's looking, Pittsburgh might not be dead just yet. Philadelphia seems to have found new life. Buffalo's, of course, they, they're a Super Bowl contender. There's some competitiveness within these divisions, and I think it's a lot better. I think this is better than forcing the NFC East, which is just basically, okay, who backs into it? Who's going to be that fourth seed that just gets knocked down in the wild card round? That happens every year. Or you look at the a what the AFC East was for years. You have one team bullying everybody else. And it looks like it's going to stay that way. I mean, I know Miami can be competitive and New England is still good. Well-ish. We'll see what happens with their whole offensive problem this year. And the Jets can be competitive at times. But it looks like they have a new bully this time. It's just Buffalo instead of New England. The North... Uh, is always ultra competitive. It's one of the more physical divisions. The West is always competitive, both in the NFC and the AFC. But I think what this does is that it eliminates some of those top-heavy divisions, like the AFC South, the NFC East, uh, the North, the NFC North especially, is always pretty top-heavy. You could maybe argue the AFC uh, East has been, it, it's been top-heavy for years. Maybe you could argue the North. It always depends on kind of with Baltimore. They're kind of like that tipping point between it being a really top-heavy division because when they're competitive, there's always somebody right there with them. But when Baltimore is kind of down, then one team just runs with it. That seems to happen a lot. Like Cincinnati basically stole the division this year. That wasn't even in question. And so what this does is it does provide a little more of a competitive edge because now you have teams that seem to have a little bit of equal balance of talent playing each other. The rebuilding teams are still stuck there. They're still going to have to go through that. But we at least have more comp competition and a bit more of an equal playing field. So now let's go to scheduling. How does this work? How I think scheduling would work is that we would settle on some form of round-robin scheduling. What this does is that you're not going to just play like a selection of teams. Like, you know, like for example, AFC West, Broncos this year. Um... We obviously, we play the West every single year. We play the Chargers twice, the Chiefs twice, and the Raiders twice. And then we kind of play a different division with a few teams just kind of thrown in the mix. Like in the NFC this year, this year we get the NFC West. We're playing Seattle, San Francisco, LA, Arizona. And we get the AFC South. We get Jacksonville, Houston, Indianapolis, Tennessee. Uh, so you get that mix, and there's always a few extra teams just kind of thrown in there. Kind of a little hint of who you'll play next year. So you just have that mix in there. Um, what this would do is that we're doing a completely different format. With round robin scheduling, there's a few ways to try this, but what I prefer is similar to what the NFL does, performance-based scheduling. So for example, we're sticking with the Western Conference, right? So let's say we're looking at the, uh, at the Midwest Division. Green Bay won their division last year. They, they won the North. Let's say Green Bay had won the Midwest Division if we were in a Western Conference style format. So then what Green Bay would do is that for, let me, so I figure, so we have 17 games. 10 games you will end up playing versus the Western Conference. And then 7 games you play versus the Eastern Conference. Or it's vice versa if you're in the East. And how this works is that for the 10 games you play in your, in your conference, you play every team within your division. And then, so for example, so you, if you're Green Bay, you're playing 6. And then they will play four teams from the coastal division because those teams are out, because those are you know filling the other ten, and then seven teams from the east kind of goes on a little bit of a shuffle. Now in terms of home games versus away games, I figured you could do a sort of a rotation every year: nine home games versus eight road games. Then the next year, eight home games versus nine road games. The exception to this would be if you're playing in an international game. If you get the Mexico City game, or if you get the London game, or if you get the game in Germany, those are going to be coming up pretty soon, games in Germany. Then what's going to happen is that you will get eight home games, eight road games, and then you will get that international game as sort of like the split the hair difference. I'm not going to count that against a team, even if they are technically a home team or a road team for that. I'm not going to count that against them because that's not really a home game or a road game. That's a neutral site game. So I won't count that against your home games or road games. You'll get 8-8 eight and eight and then the 1. 
and that's how that would work. So, for example, so again, if you're Green Bay, you win your division. So this year, you would play obviously your division. You're playing Kansas City, you're playing Chicago, you're playing Dallas, Minnesota, Cincinnati, Houston. You play your entire division. So then, since you won, you would face the four toughest teams from the opposite division. So from the coast, you would play the Rams, they're the defending champions. You would probably play the Cardinals, you would play the Raiders, and you would play the Chargers. Those are four playoff teams, teams that made the playoffs last year. Uh, you would play those four teams, and that would make up your ten. And then from the Eastern Conference, to make up a total of seven, you would play three and four of the toughest teams per division. From the Central Division, they'd probably play like Buffalo, uh, they'd probably play Indianapolis, they would play Tennessee, maybe uh, you could argue they could play maybe Philadelphia. Those would be the four from the from the uh, Central Division. From the Atlantic, you'd be playing obviously Tampa Bay, I would throw in Baltimore, and then New England. Those would be your three tough teams. Those are three teams, they, um, those were pretty tough teams. Baltimore may not have made the playoffs last year, but they were obviously injured, battered up, so I would throw them as that third team from the Eastern Conference, or at least from the Atlantic Division, to make up that 17th game. You would still have your bye week, but that's how we would do it. Whereas, opposed to say, if you were Jacksonville, and you finish as the worst team in the, in the league, and you definitely finished bottom, Jacksonville, obviously they play their entire division, that would make up eight games for them, and then, obviously, since you're playing ten, you would play. They would play two of the bottom. They would play two of the bottom teams from the Central Division. So in which case they would be playing Detroit and Atlanta, since those were two teams that finished near the bottom of the league last year. In the Western Conference, then let's see to make up those seven games. You're probably playing like Denver. Uh, maybe you're gonna throw in Seattle. You could throw Houston in there. Minnesota, maybe, even though they weren't that bad. Chicago, definitely Chicago. They were not very good last year. And then they'd have to face somewhat of a tougher opponent. You would probably have to play like Cincinnati and maybe one of the LA teams, the Rams or the Chargers, to make up that seventh game. It would be a little tough. We'd have to spend some time cracking down and figuring it out. But I think what this does is it does provide some equal balance for each team. If you are like the Jacksonville Jaguars and you finish last, I mean, obviously, they're playing the Jets, the Giants, they're playing Washington, teams that were not very good last year. They get their shot at teams like Detroit and Chicago. They get to play Denver, a team that didn't make the playoffs last year, even though Denver is much improved, but obviously based on performance. Denver didn't make it last year, so they would have to play them. Maybe Minnesota, since they didn't make it. You play a lot of these out of playoff teams if you're a bottom tier team. It gives you a chance to kind of rebuild and a little bit of an easier time ratcheting up your schedule Whereas opposed say to the Jets, you're forced to play three teams that will crush you instantly in the Jets, Patriots, and Bills. You're forced to play those teams twice a year. So you obviously rebuilding your team is going to be tough because you're facing three opponents that are constantly loading up and you never have a chance to get yourself going. This does provide you more of an equal chance. You can face teams that are more based on your skill level of competition and it gives you an easier chance to rebuild yourself. You don't have to face all of the Goliaths and force yourself to get blown out. Obviously, you're going to have to face a tougher team. Like I said with Jacksonville, to fill out that seventh game, they would have to face one of the Los Angeles teams. I'd maybe throw in the Chargers because the Chargers missed the playoffs, but the Chargers would not be easy by any means for Jacksonville. So it would. that's how I think scheduling would work. Sounds a little complicated. I tried to make it as easy to understand as I could, but basically it will be judged based on your performance from last year, and if you won your division, you automatically get the tougher teams. You get teams like the Los Angeles Rams, the Green Bay Packers, you get Arizona, San Francisco, you get Green Bay, you get, the, you get Tampa Bay, you get Buffalo, you get teams that won their divisions, and you have to play the tougher teams of your conference. That's how scheduling would work in my opinion provides a more equal level of competition, equal field of play, and one thing it does also help, and a little bit of a little caveat here, it does sort of help with an anti-tanking measure. Because if you're a bad team and you're trying to tank that year, you can't just say, well, it doesn't matter if we try or not, we're facing a bunch of top-heavy teams that are leagues better than us, so even if we tried, we'd get beat anyway. Now you're facing equal level competition. So if you tried to tank, it would be blatantly obvious so like if you're Jacksonville and you're facing Detroit and let's say one of those teams is trying to tank, it would be pretty obvious who's it would be pretty obvious because both those teams are not very good. So 
yeah, yes, there's a chance that maybe they do try and maybe they just suck regardless. That's always a possibility. But I think this is a better way to prevent tanking because you're facing more equal competition at your skill level and it provides teams more incentives to keep rebuilding because, hey, you have a few more winnable games. So if you're Jacksonville and you're looking at teams like, hey, we get to play Chicago, we get to play New York, we, uh, both New York teams, we get to play Detroit, who wasn't very good last year, we get to play Seattle, who now is starting Geno Smith. You can look at that and say, hey, we don't just have to tank and get another number one overall pick. We could win five, six games this year, maybe even seven if the, a few things fall our way. Because you're facing teams that are either just a hair above or at your kind of competition skill level. So you're going to be in that position. I think Jacksonville would definitely be more incentive. And obviously, if you're one of the tougher teams like Green Bay, Los Angeles, Tampa, Buffalo, then you have a chance to stake your claim as the best team in the NFL because you're facing teams that are more your competition, more your skill level. And what this so if you're a mid-tier team, let's say you're like Dallas, you won your division, but you really didn't do much in the playoffs, you're a 10 and 7 team, you face a healthy mix of both. You face more of the media, you may kind of face a bit of the mediocre and the bad teams, but you do face a little more of the tougher competition just because you won your division, you made the playoffs last year, you gotta win it again. So that's how I would do it, and that handles scheduling. Now, playoff seeding, I am going off of the NHL's format. I know the NFL probably would never do this, but Hey, this is my world I'm in this fantasy. I'm running football, the NFL so I can do what I want. So let's go with what I would do with the playoff seeding. Obviously, I go through a one through eight playoff seeding. So on the Western Conference, those are 14 teams. We're taking eight teams out of six. But based on some of the teams I listed, I have a feeling that we're not going to have any bottom feeders kind of sneak their way in by default. I'll get to that in a bit. We have a one through eight playoff seeding, and only the one seeds get home field advantage throughout the entirety of the playoffs. Then the two seeds, obviously one and two, those are your division winners. So for example, in the Coastal Division, the Rams would have been the two seed and the Packers would have been the one seed because they won their divisions last year and Green Bay was number one in the NFC last year. So the Packers and the Rams would have been the one seed in the Western Conference. In the Eastern Conference, your division winners last year were Buffalo and, Tam Buffalo and Tampa Bay. They won their divisions. They were probably the best in their respective leagues. So I would definitely put Buffalo and Tampa Bay. They would definitely have been the one in the two seeds last year. But the, of course, only the ones get home field throughout the playoffs. But if you're a top four seed, you are guaranteed one home playoff game if you're one through four. So then three through eight depends on your overall record, your division record, and your conference record. So what this does is it prevents situations like what we had in 2020 with Washington, 2010 with Seattle, 2014 with Carolina. We prevent, we prevent teams from below 500 of getting into the playoffs by default. No by default division winners, no 500 or below teams sneaking in because we absolutely have to. And of course, them would hosting that playoff game. That wouldn't be the case here. We would absolutely make it sort of a requirement. You have to at least finish with 10 wins based on the way that the conferences and the divisions are aligned. You have to finish with 10 wins to be into the playoffs. You have to be at least 10 and seven. I think what this does is it does weed out those weak playoff teams. With those eight teams that get in, we can legitimately say they earned their way in. They didn't fall backwards into it. They didn't get in there by default or by luck. They earned their way into the playoffs. We don't have a 7-9 Washington, 7-10 Seattle, a 7-8-1 Carolina that had to win their last three games just to get into the playoffs. So we'll, uh, that's one thing that does absolutely help that out. We're leveling the playing field. So the question is, would we have a wild card game? Would there be any kind of wild card weekend? I would have my caveats about that because there's a chance that what would technically be the ninth seed or the ninth team in the conference. They would probably be a team that's nine and eight or below 500, and they would get a chance to knock out a 10 and seven or maybe even better team because they technically are that ninth seed. So they technically get a playoff game, a wild card game. Obviously, they'd be the road team, but there's a chance they upset that team and then they just go probably get blown out by that one seed. Would I do that? If I had to, fine, I'll add a ninth seed versus eighth seed game, and that team goes on, they become the new eighth seed, and then we go into the playoffs. But if I really had to, I would just go with the NHL style format, 
because uh, I think the NHL has the best playoffs, the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think it's the best format out there. So in my opinion, I would prefer it. No wild card game. We just go one through one versus eight, two versus seven, three versus six, four versus five, and we're on with our day. Now, obviously, again, if you're a one through four seed, you get home field at least one home field playoff game. Ones through the entirety of the playoffs, two through four, you get at least one home game. So. Uh, that that's how I would do the playoffs and it's pretty simplistic from there it kind of goes uh, it wouldn't be as long as the NHL the NBA playoffs because we're not doing a best of seven series it's just a one and done you win your game you're on to the next round what this does is it probably pushes the Super Bowl more to the second or third week of, Jan of February instead of the first week of February like it's usually been so probably around maybe even around near Valentine's Day or a few days after Valentine's Day we'd be having the uh, we'd be having the Super Bowl would the NFL be opposed to that? I don't know if they would because you get another two, three weeks of playoff revenue. And with how uh, views of the NFL skyrocket during the playoffs, absolutely we would get that. The NFL would get even more money, more revenue. Now, uh, what I now one thing I would do in this format, I would completely nick the Pro Bowl entirely. I would nick the All-Star Game, do something else with it. Uh, that doesn't really have much impact on this kind of format, but this is how I would do it personally. So let's again go over what I think this does in terms of a pro versus a con. One thing this absolutely does, as I said previously, it prevents teams from getting in by default. You have to at least win 10 games in this format to get into the playoffs, because if we bo broke off of the teams that made the playoffs last year, there would be a couple teams that probably did not make the cut, like probably like the 9, 7, and 1 Pittsburgh Steelers in this format. They probably don't get in. In terms of like the um, maybe the 10 and 7 Eagles, maybe they're that final suit, maybe they missed the playoffs just by that much. We would not get see that many teams that probably would have made the playoffs last year, probably not make it in because it's a lot tougher this time around. Now, it's a lot harder and it makes the regular season matter even more. So now if you're a bad team and you're in a bad division, you're not just saying, well, all we got to do is luck out and win our, win our division. No, if you're a below 500 team, you're not getting into the playoffs. No ifs, ands, or buts. So that would just be my one caveat. Second, one thing I think it does is it provides a more equal balance of play. Obviously, based on the scheduling and based on uh, the way the divisions are aligned, I think it's a more equal playing field. There's no tanking. There's no bottom tier teams just fed to the wolves like there's no Jacksonville going to play Buffalo on the road there's no Detroit having to play Green Bay on the road there's no of these bottom tier teams being forced to play bigger teams that are just nothing more than a record buffer now you actually have the tougher teams facing equal competition and the bottom tier teams have more of a chance to get their seasons going instead of just taking a pounding from the big boys I think this provides a more balanced field of play and that increases fandom it invites more fans to watch because now they don't just have to watch their team get absolutely ass blasted by a top tier team they can just watch their they can actually watch their team play in equal competition and see how their team fares I know it's not the greatest measuring stick because people are, we always get that stupid fan excuse, you know, oh, well, you played this team or you played that team. Well, guess what? There's a reason they're playing that team. In this format, there's a reason you're playing that team with that record because your team played like that last year. So now if you're able to beat some of those teams, hey, look at that, you're getting better. Next year, you'll face a little tougher competition and we'll see how far you've come. That's what I think this does. It entices more fans to watch instead of just watching the draft. Now you actually get to see your team play out. So this time, if you do get the number one overall pick, that means you truly were terrible. You couldn't even beat teams that were supposed to be on your level of play. You really were that terrible, and you deserve to get that number one overall pick. I think this makes the sport more competitive. Now, the cons, based on how long it took me to explain the scheduling aspect, yeah, it is a little tougher to understand. Yes, it is a little tougher for you to... Yes, it's a little tougher for people to kind of see how this is supposed to play out because it's pretty cut and dry how the how the scheduling works now in the NFL. You play in this division, you play these three teams, three teams twice a year, and then you play those two divisions, one from the AFC, one from the NFC. There, there's your schedule, pretty easy. But again, I think it's not as equal balanced a competition. I think the playoff seating also would not be what the NFL would prefer. I think they prefer four division winners and three wildcard teams. I don't think that's as balanced and as competitive. I think what the one through eight seeding conference style does 
it increases the importance of the regular season, and it gives teams way more incentive to more uh, go shoot for one of those top four seeds because at least you're getting a home playoff game. And if you were the number one team in the conference, guess what? It's like in the NHL. You truly deserve to be that number one team. You were truly head and shoulders above the rest. Look at the NHL this past year. The Colorado Avalanche and the Florida Panthers were the number one seeds. Both those teams finished with at least 119 points. The Panthers with 120. Those were the, and nobody else even came close. The team behind Colorado had 106. They were the top teams in their conferences and they deserved to be the number one seed. That's what this does for the NFL. The Rams and the Packers would have earned the right to be those number one seeds and the Bills and the Bucks would have earned the right to be the one and two seeds. Anyways, yes, I know this is a lot to digest. I tried to make it easy, but this is my idea for how an Eastern and a Western conference could work. What did you guys think? Uh, do you think this is better? Do you think this is worse than what the NFL has now? Would you make changes to it? Do you think this could work in the long run? Or do you think, nah, it's fine how it is now? That's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I will be back. We have Bronco recaps coming. I got other videos planned. Football season's back. It's a great time. Anyways, I'm glad to be back. I will see you guys later.